So it turns out that I've made a lot of videos, not just one, but quite a few about reconstructing the face and head tracking and stuff like that. Actually, thinking back to all the default cube and CG matter videos I've done, a weird amount of them actually revolve around the face, whether it's growing a beard or motion tracking or I guess some bizarre stuff that I was doing earlier. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that I've been making faces for a while now, and the two methods I've been using really are one, photogrammetry, which again is taking a bunch of photos and using that to synthesize a 3D model, and you can do that with more than just faces. And the second method I've been using, which is a bit more direct, is that Keen Tools Face Builder uh, Blender add-on, which does a good job at making the face, but it doesn't really get those fine pores and details. So I figured, since this is something I've done a bunch of times, let me try it differently, and I'll do it with the Creality Ferret Scanner. Now, if you haven't seen my review from a couple videos back, you can watch that to get all the specifications and stuff about the Ferret Scanner. I basically reviewed it, uh, but the main takeaways are this. You have the scanner head, which has depth sensors and also color camera information and stuff like this. You also have a stand that you can actually move it around using that, and there's a bunch of other accessories, but the point is I want to try scanning my face in a new kind of method. Now something I should say of course is that this video is sponsored by Creality, surprise surprise. Regardless of that, I do think it's cool to be able to scan your face in a level of detail where 3D printing it is something that's possible. So uh, let's try to get my likeness, and this is how I did it. I started by downloading the Creality software. This is basically your interface between the scanner and actually exporting OBJs and 3D models and stuff like this. And after choosing my project file specifications, which by the way, it seems like there's actually a setting for face kinds of scans, so I made sure to click that. I dipped my my toes or I ran headfirst into scanning. And basically what you need to know is that in this software you get a depth view where you can see what the ferret scanner is seeing and then also basically a camera pass which would be the color information. Your goal is to position the scanner at a distance from the subject, in this case my face, where it's not too close, it's not too far away, but it's in that Goldilocks perfect zone. And you need to keep it there for the whole scan. So I actually had somebody help me, my girlfriend, thank you so much for her, for scanning my face, and of course I'm thankful for her for other reasons as well. But uh, this is something that you want the second person to do for you because it's going to be kind of hard to not move your head or your face or make facial expressions as you're doing this. Tiny things to keep in mind, if you have long hair like I do or even longer hair, you want to make sure you go like this because scanners in general, and this is also true for photogrammetry and the other methods, don't do very well with this like thin stuff. So you want to you wanna move that out of the way. And then also I made sure to keep my eyes closed because it would be very hard to look straight in the same direction without blinking uh, for a very long time. It's possible. I wouldn't do it. So yeah, basically we got onto scanning and what I found the best method is, is you want to kind of go very slowly. So you're going to go up and down and up and down, almost like you're cleaning a window. And it seems like the slower and more precisely you do this, again, staying in that perfect zone, the more aligned your scan is going to be. And it's going to prevent moments where the scan doesn't know where you are temporarily. So going slow and steady really seems to be the way to go here. Now, uh, with the face, there are some areas that are a bit hard to capture. Of course, the hair, like I said, uh, but specifically the under area, under your chin and under your nose. You got to get the scanner under there, uh, which is kind of hard because it's a very rough, abrupt transition from the scan data to like a different surface. You're going to get misalignment. You want to go super slowly and fill in the entire face because if you're doing this kind of scanning, I'd want a face without any holes or anything like that. I don't really care that the throat or the shoulders or anything like that aren't filled in, although in my case it actually looks like she did a very good job scanning the neck. I didn't ask her to scan the neck, but I guess that's what she was like focused on. But I digress. Basically what you want to do is you want to scan using the Creality software. We talked about that. And then once you have your data processed and you can actually like preview what this looks like, you just process the mesh and that could be optimizing your mesh and it can also look like adding in the color or texture data. And this is only if you want to. Again, the scanners are better at geometry than they are at texture data. But because I did have it capture 
uh, color, I figured why not? Let's throw that in there. And you can see I got a model, which the thing I'm most impressed by is the level of detail in the geometry. All those ugly wrinkles and pimples and pores are there in full display. And this is just something I guess I could export as an OBJ or some other file format uh, into Blender. So that's exactly what I did. I exported this into Blender, and you can see that now this is a model in my 3D space with a material file that actually loads in the texture, which by the way is an abomination because the UV mapping it does by default is very like segmented and it makes a lot of islands. This is some cursed shit. But yeah, I got my model inside a Blender and then to isolate the face, because that's what we're going for in this case, you could scan your own head. What I did is I basically made a piece of geometry, a distorted cylinder that would kind of represent what part of the geometry represents the face. And this could just be isolated using a Boolean operation. And just like that, bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself an accurate face model. And you did that without any photogrammetry or without keen tools, which is to say, I guess this method is the most sensical way to do it, right? If you want an accurate representation of your face, probably the best way to get that is via a scan. So this is just a project I wanted to see like how it would come out and I'm pretty impressed with the results. And I guess at some point I wanna 3D print this thing, but I want it to be actually face sized and a lot of 3D printers don't do that. Like they have like much smaller print sizes. Uh, but that's not what this video is about. It was about scanning your face, and now uh, you could kind of implement a lot of the other tutorials that I've made about like growing a beard or motion tracking and stuff like that uh, with this base mesh. So it turns out that the Creality Ferret Scanner can do this very well. And again, I just want to emphasize this video has been sponsored by Creality and their scanner, but this is an actual result I got with their scanner. And in the world of scanners, it's not that expensive compared to some of these other ones that can go to like near a thousand or above a thousand. There you go, a video. I made it. You watched it. This is the YouTube interaction we made. Goodbye.